Good evening, Borders customers. I and Borders are very pleased to welcome this evening author Doug Weed as he discusses All the President's Children, Triumph and Tragedy in the Lives of America's First Families, an entertaining authoritative account revealing the public failures and personal triumphs of the extraordinary offspring of the nation's chief executives. Featuring short biographies of living presidential children and a chronological list of all president children, this book is both an entertaining lesson on our nation's history and a fascinating look at the current administration. Doug Weed was the special assistant to President H.W. Bush, and he has also served as a prominent corporate and motivational speaker. In fact, he was just speaking in India last week to 30,000 people, which I thought was very impressive. Since 1982, Weed has served as chairman of the annual Washington Charity Dinner and was the co-founder of Mercy Corps International in 1979. Doug Weed currently resides in Washington, D.C. Mr. Weed will discuss his book for about 20 to 25 minutes and then take questions from the audience. So please join me in welcoming this evening Mr. Douglas Weed. Thanks very much. Thanks, Daryl. This is a pretty, pretty great bookstore been hearing about it, and I, I came down earlier today to look it over a little bit. I'll tell you how I got started uh, on this project. I was working for um, Bush Sr., but my boss was Bush Jr., um, actually um, George W. Bush, but w we called him Jr. sometimes then, and sometimes he called himself Jr. Later, uh, uh, writers, I, I notice, will often correct people who say George Bush Jr., but I would sit in his office many a time when he would get on the phone and he would say to some stubborn secretary on the other end, tell him George Bush Jr. is calling. So he was George Bush Jr. when he wanted to be, but he was George W. to us, and he was my immediate boss, and we, uh, his dad had won the election, so he was now president-elect. We were sitting in his office talking about who's going to go to transition, who's going to go to inaugural, who's going to go into the White House, and who isn't. And as we were sitting there chatting at a certain moment, he sighed and he said, uh, well, now what's going to happen to me? Which was surprise to me. He, he uh, it was a rare moment for him. He didn't talk or think a lot about himself, and I hadn't either but I had written thousands of pages for his pop, and so I immediately su suggested, well, you want me to write a book, or a <laughs> yeah, be good, it ended up a book. You want me to write a memo on presidential kids? And he said, sure. So when you're in a political campaign like that and it's over, whether you win or lose, there's a depression that sits in because you're just going full blast and it's like a train, you hit the wall, bang, it's over, it's done. So I had a staff of eager young people uh, who were ready to go. There was nothing to do. They were waiting for transition to kick in. So I gathered them around and, and we said, I said to him, hey, we got 30 days. Let's put together a memo for George W. on presidential kids. What happens to them? And so we hit the Library of Congress, uh, flush with the victory of a president-elect. We even contacted some presidential children of former presidents and put together a 44-page memo in about 30 days. And it was fascinating. I mean, there was everything, romance, uh, illicit love, murder. <laughs> I, I was very surprised by how ignorant I was of presidential children, and I thought of myself as an as a amateur historian. I loved history. I was just shocked at the stories. I was shocked at the impact that presidential children have on history. I mean, it makes sense. Um, our children impact our lives and our careers, so it makes sense, but I had never seen it 